Good morning, Bear Nation. It's uh, 7 a.m. We are headed into the office. Whoa, there's the sun. If only I had one of these things, the, the spectacles. There we go. Um, this is more of an old school truck talk kind of morning stream of consciousness uh, flow of thoughts conceptual thinking about a few things this morning and kind of the the three angles of the triangle of my thoughts this morning are um, modern males the that'd be one the next would be the need for heroes in today's society real heroes not Hollywood bullcrap heroes Uh, real heroes, people who actually affect positive change on target and get things done for themselves, their family, their tribe, their clan, society. And then the third thing that's kind of sticking in my mind is stewardship and apprenticeship. Kind of that relationship between a, a teacher and a student, but it's more than that. I don't know, you know, and I'm just, again, I'm just spitballing here. I don't know if you've ever spent any time, you know, and I I can only speak to my experience, but for me, spending time with older men, standing next to them, watching them do what it is that they do, what they are good at, whether that's a farmer making a piece of equipment on the farm work, right? You know, and farmers get a... They get a a bad rap for that because everything is just kind of cobbled together. It's like, yeah, but you got to really understand how something works in order to be able to cobble it together and make it continue to work, right? There's an art to jerry-rigging when it comes to uh, farming, right? Or or I I learned woodworking from a master woodworker. You know, I, I came from a framing background where if you got it within a sixteenth of an inch, you were good. And now it's like, eh, that cut's a 32nd of an inch off. I don't know if it's going to work. Like, that matters, right? I learned that from a, a gentleman older than myself. All, all of the things that I know, uh, that I know here with my hands, I learned with an older man standing next to me, how to swing an ax, how to run a chainsaw, how to climb trees. And I mean like climb trees with climbing gear on, how to climb power poles and put up high line and do all of those things. Came from an older man taking me under his wing and saying, all right, kids, sit down, shut up, pay attention. This is how we're gonna do this. So if you have somebody in your life If you are that older man and there's a younger man who needs stewardship, steward them, please, for the sake of society, steward them. You know, we we are losing the tradition of passing knowledge, not information. Information is cheap. I can right now, I can get on my phone and go to Google or DuckDuckGo or Yahoo. It doesn't matter. I've got myriad options at my fingertips for information. Information is cheap right now. I'm talking about knowledge. Knowledge. If you're that older gentleman who has the knowledge and there's somebody in your life, if there's a younger gentleman who can benefit from your stewardship, I'm asking you please to steward them. For society as a whole, please steward them. If you're the younger man, allow yourself to be stewarded. Look for the older men. And and ladies, this is the same thing. The younger ladies and the older ladies. I mean, Granny B. If you're not following Granny B on YouTube, man, you're missing out. Because Granny B is awesome. She's also, she and her husband are also personal friends of myself and my wife, and they are part of our mag. But she's awesome because she knows how to do the things. If it's ever, hey, I wonder how do we actually can green beans? We never made it that far with, oh, Granny B knows. Huh, how do you make a 
a pie crust without lard, granny B knows, so forth and so on. Right, and so it's it doesn't have to be, nor should it be, just male to male. But look for the opportunity for stewardship. If you're a younger person, look for somebody literally to look up to, to teach you the ways. And if even if this society doesn't go to hell in the handbasket, which I don't see how that's possible, but even if it doesn't. Think of the skills that you possess, how valuable you will be. I am completely unafraid of being without work. It just doesn't bother me because the the skill sets that I have, because of the work experience that I have, I can go anywhere and do anything. Doesn't matter. Someone say, well, I'm blessed. Yeah, but I've put in a lifetime of hard work and a lifetime of tutelage and a lifetime of apprenticeship. You know, I went and in four years went from not knowing anything about fine carpentry to consistently making cuts within a 64th of an inch of where they needed to be. Fitting joinery by hand in multi, multi, multi million dollar homes. Hand fitted hand-built, handmade, handcrafted with these hands. That's just one thing. And if I had to take these hands and use them to swing an axe, the whole other end of the spectrum, boy, I know how to do that too. I've got the muscle memory for that and so forth and so on. And so even if the world doesn't end, man, having a, a, a repertoire of useful skills, having all these different tools in your tool belt, so to speak, is a blessing. It actually gives you a lot of confidence and it gives you a lot of mobility. You're not you know, well, I'm an admin clerk and that's all I know how to do. Okay, well, good. The world needs admin clerks, but now start figuring out other things that you can do, right? And the passing of that knowledge along forges bonds that are just impossible to describe. The old man who taught me how to cut timber, I remember the day he died. And it was like, it was as painful as the day my grandfather died. Because that man took time that he will never get back, that he never got back, and he gave it to me to make me better so that I could make y'all better. We all owe that man a debt of gratitude. And I still remember him to this day. His name was John. And he was awesome. And at 80 years old, he could whip the crap out of any four of us put together. He was a strong, hardworking, honest man. And uh, I think of him often. So we're missing this real human connection these days. And that brings me to modern males. We love to blame society, but we forget we are society. Well, it's society's fault. Well, as much as we do or don't want to be involved, and believe me, I don't want to be involved. We are society. Well, we're too small of a part. Ah, not on the individual level. Again, coming back to stewardship and apprenticeship. On the individual level, you're just the right size part of society to address somebody one-on-one to make the change one-on-one. -on -one. And hopefully you can become a force multiplier, but it's not one-on-one -on -one anymore. It's one-on-three, one-on-ten, one-on-a-hundred, one-on-forty-thousand. But start one-on-one. -on -one. Because these modern males, yeah, society's got them all jacked up, but there's nobody there course correcting for them. There's nobody saying, this is why it is all jacked up, son. Or, good, let's dive deep into these theories. And let's see what happens. Let's really examine this. You want to talk about socialism? Good. You be here at 6 a.m. with your tools, and we'll spend a day working in a socialist environment. So forth and so on. And actually engaging them, right? And molding them slowly. It takes time. 
years. It can take years. But you know, again, there's a guy named Jerry at the wood shop in Texas. I was gonna say our wood shop, but it's not my wood shop anymore. That when I, I met Jerry at the gas station and I said, hey, do you want a real job? And he said, yeah, I do. I said, it's hard work. You're gonna sweat a bunch and you're gonna be sore at the end of the day and you're gonna get dirty, but you're gonna feel good. And I'll teach you a career he said, I'm in. What do I have to do? He said, just fill out the paperwork. You're already hired. Let's go. And I taught Jerry how to make straight cuts and miter cuts and then to run crown molding and how to shoot nails and what length nails to use and how much of the fastener you want in the wood and what's the difference between a, a B grade and a BB grade veneer on a piece of plywood and blah, 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 all, all of it, all of it he came to us he knew nothing Jerry is now the lead installer at the shop a year and a half later he took over one of the roles that I was fulfilling lead installer in my capacity at the shop and he's doing a great job he's doing an awesome job he's a year and a half deep but it took a year and a half of my time of slowly correcting him and getting him from where he was to where he need to be, needs to be. So that's more of that stewardship aspect. But man, you know, modern males, whew, they're looking for a place to fit in. Hot coffee. Hot coffee. Um, we do not need to acquiesce to their fairy tale unicorn fart worldview in order to get them to buy into uh, our way of thinking but we do need to meet them where they're at first and engage them there first and then be the example show them this is how you do it there is an alternative to this skinny jeans go on girls homeboy Okay. But somebody's got to meet them there. Somebody's got to show them. And so I would just encourage you, identify your targets. Who are you going to help? And then help them in that regard. Because this, you know, again, we can go into, well, it's society's fault. We are society. My pastor likes to say we get the government we deserve. He's right. We also get the society we deserve because we tolerate this crap. Some of us embrace it, but we're certainly not all up in arms about it. Oh, we're in the next American revolution. When? I'm about over that crap as well, but that's a different video for a different time. Well, when we take back the government, uh-huh, when's that happening? Send me an email <laughs> when it does. It's not, it's not happening. It's talk. It's rhetoric. It's, it's, they are verbal band-aids that people put on deep wounds to feel a little bit better about themselves. And I get it and I understand it, but I have seen nothing but talk ever. Mini rant. I got an email from a guy who's like, hey, have you ever talked to the Oath Keepers about helping you out on all these different missions that you do? Short answer, yeah. Not interested. Sorry, bro, can't do it. Okay, thanks. Well, what about insert state militia here? Yep, not interested. Well, what about the, yep, not interested, not interested, not interested. All of these, and listen, I like the Oath Keepers. I really do. Uh, but all of these different 3% militia type groups, I've reached out to them and said, hey, you wanna protect your country and, and serve your community? Here's an opportunity to do that. Farreakin' crickets. Nothing. And I'm a third time pays for all guy. If I ask you three times and your answer is nothing, I'm not asking you a fourth time. Ain't happening. In a lot of cases, I don't even make it to three. But I try to engage somebody three times. After three times, ain't happening. So, long answer to a short question. Uh-huh. Yeah, I reached out to him. I'll talk 
no action, which is precisely what I've seen from all these other 3% militia type groups. And I actually had a guy on Patreon got mad at me. He goes, you shouldn't talk back, talk down about the, the patriots out there and uh, do it. Show me. You and your buddies oogling the most recent Glock accessory that you got on Saturday, pretending that it's an FTX training event is not patriotism. Sorry, bro. It doesn't work that way. Everybody's sitting around going, well, when the blah, blah, blah happens, it ain't happening. Well, when they come for my guns, uh-huh. You better pray to Yahweh for strength and provision when they come for your guns, if they do. Because your buddies from your militia group, they're not coming for you. Not from what I've seen. They're staying home. They got their own problems. They're not interested. They're just looking for people to play G.I. Joe with, not to build real bonds with. Because if they were interested in building real bonds, they would actually be there when members from their own groups reach out on behalf of Bear Nation and say, hey, we need help in your storm-affected county. Can you come help? Crickets. They're not showing up during the tornado or after the tornado or after the hurricane or after the flooding. What in the world makes you think that they're going to show up when the federal government's on their doorstep? Which is a whole other story for another time. I don't believe that that's going to happen in the vast majority of the United States. But let's just say that it does. And you're depending on that. And I realize we're on a tangent here, but it's a good one. So we're going to go with it. Don't get your hopes up, is what I'm saying. Coming back to modern males, stewardship, society, apprenticeship. It's leadership. People need leadership, and we need heroes. This is what I'm talking about. Somebody's got to stand up and say, had enough. Had enough of this society. Had enough of this modern patriot movement running their mouths but not doing anything else. I've had enough of people talking a big game about helping their fellow man, but when literally things are destroyed, can't find anybody to assist. I've had enough of people saying, well, the government, that's not the government's job. We shouldn't be spending taxpayer dollars on that. Good, let's fundraise so we can bless people. Well, I'm not giving that YouTube guy any money. It ain't for me, bro. Like, I don't get it. The world needs heroes. There's enough people with enough shitty opinions sitting around running their mouths. Running their mouth. Running their mouth. That's all that it is. Just running their mouth. You shall know them by their fruits. Faith without works is dead. Show me. Leaders. Heroes. People who will willingly shoulder the burden of responsibility to try and be a blessing to their fellow man, to steward people, to guide people, to educate people, to encourage people, to lift people up out of the gutter, to meet them in the gutter first where they are, and to love on them right there in the gutter, and then move forward. And this is just kind of my stream of consciousness this morning. It's, yeah. Yeah. I tell you frankly, I need help fighting this battle. I do. I need people, I need equipment, I need material, and I need funding. I get emails every day from people who are like, my S is destroyed from this tornado, from this flood, from this thing, from this, that. I can't say yes to everybody. I wish that I could, but I can't. It drives me crazy. I get emails every day. Hey, Bear, when's man camp? I want to come. I want to learn. I want to just stand next to you. And I get it. And it humbles the ever-living piss out of me that people would think highly enough of me to want to spend their time and their money to stand next to me and learn from me. It's insane to me. It's humbling. And it's a mantle. It's a burden that I will willingly bear and humbly bear and try and be the best steward of it that I can be. But I can't do this alone. This Bear Nation thing is much more than a theory, but it needs to be much more than it is. I need localized people in your communities. And I don't care if it's 
a bear nation thing or a viking preparedness thing or your local preparedness i don't care what you call it what you do what label you put on it how it's true i don't care i simply do not care but we need people to step up i need people to step up i need people to help me and the best way to help me is to help yourselves yo and help those around you to operate from positions of strength. I can't do it all. I don't want to do it all. I have no interest in doing it all. But I want to help enough of y'all that you can go out into your communities and help everybody around you. It's called force multiplication, man. If I help 10 of y'all, and 10 of y'all help 10 people. We go from, you know, 1 to 10 to 100 to 1,000 to 10,000 to 100,000 to a million. By Generation 7, we're on a million people reached. You know, what's the cycle time on that? Maybe it's a year each. Okay, good. Well, in seven years, we can go from 1 to a million. That's what I want y'all's help with. I'm going to end with this. The Hebrew word for angel is malach. Malach. Which literally means messenger of Yahweh. Messenger of God. It is entirely possible for you to function in the role of an angel. Now I do believe there are angelic beings. But I'm talking here literally you can be a messenger of the Father. And function in the role of an angel. I would like to build a nationwide network of angels that don't talk about doing the things, that just do the things. I truly want to be not special. I want to be one of a hundred thousand people, angels, that are so awesome that comparatively not a one of them is special because they're all special. Does that make sense? And we can use that to steward people. We can use that to raise people up. We can use that to bless people. But it all starts one-on-one. -on -one. Who's that person in your life that you should be talking to that you're not? Yeah, that's what's on my brain this morning. Shalom, y'all. Blessings.